Realistic cloth is something that is pretty easily achievable in Blender, yet many people struggle with this. Some of them don't know how to simulate cloth, some of them don't know how to create appealing cloth material, and some of them think their cloth renders look too fake. So let me give you a complete workflow on how to create realistic cloth renders from scratch. So let's start with empty scene. First of all, let's make the simulation. So let's add a plane. Let's move it up. And now we need to subdivide it a few times because we need a lot of geometry. Now let's go to physics and let's add a close simulation. Now I can either go through all of these settings to simulate the right clothes that I'm looking for, or I can go here and I can choose from one of these presets. So I want to simulate cotton, so I'm going to choose cotton. The only thing that I'm going to change is that I'm going to increase the quality steps to 10. And lastly, I'm going to scroll down to the collision panel and I'm going to enable self collision. Now if I press the timeline, you can see that now we have a cloth simulation, but we have no collision object that would interact with the cloth. So let's go back to frame 1, and let's add a sphere, let's scale it down, and let's add a collision simulation to the sphere. And now if I play the timeline, we can see that now the cloth is colliding with the sphere. So now after the simulation is done, we can find a perfect spot for the cloth, and you can just apply the simulation. Now even though we subdivided the plane several times, the plane is still not smooth enough, because as you can see the individual faces are still visible. So what we can do after applying the simulation is that we can add subdivision surface, and we can change smooth the normals. Now if you want to render the actual simulation, which means that you want to render the animated cloth, what you can do is that you can select the cloth, go to physics, now scroll down, open the cache settings, and click on the bake simulation button. This will basically pre-calculate the simulation, so it can run into real time in the viewport, and it also helps the rendering to be faster, since Blender doesn't have to recalculate each frame, because the simulation is already calculated. However, be aware of the fact that when you change any of these settings again, you need to rebake the whole animation. So now when we have the cloth set up, we can actually light the scene. So let's go to Cycles, let's enable GPU, let's go to the render view, let's go to shading, and we want to change the world. Let's change the shader type to world, <coughs> let's add environment texture, let's plug the color into the color, and let's open environment texture. I would like to use this one. I'm actually going to decrease the strength to like 0.5, because I'm gonna also add additional light. If you like the lighting, but you want to remove the background from the view, go to render properties, then find the film settings, then scroll down and find the film settings, and check transparent. And now we are going to make the fabric material. So let's go back to the object, and let's create a new material. Now there are two ways how we can make a fabric material in Blender. You can either use an image texture, or you can make a procedural material with nodes. Now I'm going to make a video in future on how to make a procedural fabric material. However, to make this video a beginner friendly, I'm gonna keep it simple, and I'm gonna use image textures. So let's find some materials. So go to any website that offers PBR materials. My favorite one is Ambient CG because it's completely free. And all the assets here are CC0 licensed, which, mean, which means that you can use them for free even for commercial purposes. So let's go to surfaces, let's open the categories and let's find fabric material. Now I like this one, so I'm gonna download the 8K version because I'll be doing a close-up render. Now after the material is downloaded, it will come as a compressed zip file, so you need to extract it first. And once you do so, you will see all of these maps. So let's copy the destination where the materials are, let's go back to Blender, and before you apply the maps, make sure that you have enabled Node for Angular, that comes with Blender. You can enable it by going to Preferences, Add-ons, and just look up for Node for Angular, and make sure it's enabled. So now let's select the principal PSDF, and with Ctrl Shift T, I'm going to open a file browser, and now I can just paste the destination here, I'm gonna select all textures, and I'm gonna click on this blue button. Now everything should be set up perfectly. If you think that the material is too small, you can change the scale of the material with the help of the mapping node. Now for additional realism, what you can do is open the sheen settings, and you can increase the weight to 1. And if you are using denim material like me, you can also change the tint color to blue. This setting will basically add a soft and velvet appearance, which is usually caused by the light when it scatters in the microfibers. If you also want to use the displacements to actually displace the fibers, you can go to the settings, and in the settings you can enable displacement and bump, then go to render properties, and change the feature set to experimental. Now go back to modifiers, and check adaptive subdivision. But for now I'm gonna change the displacement to zero. Now another cool way how we can add softness to your cloth, is by adding a tiny bit of subsurface scattering. Now cloth in general doesn't really have subsurface scattering, so we are basically doing something that is not realistic, so this is totally optional, but I think it adds some sort of softness to the fabric, 
So I'm going to increase the subsurface scattering and I'm going to change the radius to 0 0.15, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. This will basically make the thin parts of the cloth that are facing the light a little bit more translucent. As you can see here, we have some blue light scattering that is happening inside, which is at least in my opinion helping to present the cloth a little bit better. So now we have the cloth and it's actually honestly looking pretty good, but we can take this on a whole another level by adding a particle system, which is the tiny seasoning that will basically make this render perfect. But before we do this, we are going to set up the camera first. So let's add the camera and find a good angle where you want to place the camera. I think this angle is pretty good. So I'm going to go closer and with Ctrl Alt and 0, I'm going to place the camera to the view. I will also add empty. I'm going to snap it on the surface of the cloth and I'm going to use it as a focus object of the camera. So let's go to the camera settings. Let's enable depth of field and let's select the empty as the focus object. So now let's make the fibers that are basically sticking out of the cloth, which is that secret sauce to make the cloth more realistic. So let's go to particles. Let's create a new particle system. Let's, let's change it to hair and let's check advanced. So first of all, as you can see, the fibers are too thick and long. So we're going to decrease the length to something really small. Now let's scroll down and open the hair shape. Next, let's adjust the thickness of the hair particles. So scroll down and open the hair shape panel. And now decrease the diameter of the root to make the hair thinner. Now open the physics panel and let's increase the brownian. And because we want more fibers to actually stick out from the fabric, we need to increase the number of hair particles. So let's use something like 20,000. And now as you can see all the hair are basically straight. So let's make them a little bit curly. And we can do this by going to physics and by increasing the Brownian force. This will basically make the hair a little bit curly, but now they are too big so we need to scale them down. But because they are too big we actually need to increase the dump to make them a little bit smaller. And because I still think that the fibers are too thick, I'm gonna make them a little bit more thinner. So let's change the diameter scale to like 0 0.005. And I'm gonna decrease the hair length a little bit more. And to make the particles denser, I'm gonna increase the number of particles to like 100,000. And the last thing that we need to do is, is to actually change the material for the hair particles. So let's go to material properties and let's create a new slot. Let's create a new material and let's name it hair. And now let's go to shading. First, let's set the roughness to like 0.3. Then we will choose a blue color as a base color and then set the transmission to one. And now if you go back to the particle settings and you select the hair material that we just created, you can see that now the hair is more realistic because we are using a separate material for this, which basically makes it more appealing. And this is basically all for the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned how to make a cloth in Blender. Also check out my Shadeguard library, which is a pack of procedural materials for Blender that you can adjust, customize and even animate. You can find over 80 different materials from nature, urban areas and even effects. So if you are interested, it's the first link in the description. With that being said, that's all for me and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you.